We are working on 2004 uh, Toyota Corolla. Uh, this car has a hesitation problem. Uh, just uh, in high speeds, I'm feeling low power. I worked on this car too much. Uh, this is my car. Uh, so this is very much familiar to you. As I'm always working on this. And this time also. As I'm feeling low power, complaint is there. So we are going to solve this problem. And here is the solution. So as a first step, I have to scan the car with my trusty scanner. So here is the DLC connector, as you can see, this one, and of course the small side will go down, something like this, and while it is connected, you can see the scanner switched on. And now we are going to put the key in, and will not start the engine, instead I will just switch it on, up to the signs. So here is the scanner now switched on. And you can see the OBD, OBD2, EOBD. On this I will scan. For scanning I have to press on OK. And then as you can see it is communicating with the, the scan tool is communicating with the vehicle. And while it will establish communication, it will show us that the communication had been established. And here you will see a sign which is over here of course. So ISO 91412. I think this will be the communication standard yes of course this one as you can see so here you can see the mill status is off as you can see mill is over there but this is not the mill this is actually the light uh, which is uh, lamp test so now it is telling that uh, it is previously stored data so no for sure no I will not erase it instead I will see the for the codes and by this way I will have to select no and no and here you can see read codes so I will go to select read codes so that we will see either code is there or not store codes store codes we will have to check for there is no code okay so then next of course I have to go to escape and check for the again for the read codes and pending codes I have to check pending codes no codes so there is no codes available but still I'm feeling a complaint of uh, low power uh, so in this situation the scanner is not helping because there is no data available no data stored in the computer so we will disconnect the scanner and then further we will test it as I did so many tests on this car like uh, spark I test for fuel injection I, I tested everything was okay there was no problem seemed and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the fuel pressure as here you can see uh, this one this is a paper with me actually from the whatsoever this uh, service manual and this is important because we will know the specified values from the factory and here is the setup what we will do is we have to adapt one gauge uh, one gauge in the way or T8 as you can see this is T8 over here and uh, these all are SST from Toyota SST gauge also but there is no SST available with us instead we are going to make some arrangement for this one I just made it and uh, to check the fuel pressure and what will be the specified value for the fuel pressure is 44 to 50 psi this is a well known to me and I know it about 44 to 50, 50 psi. Now this is something a well known uh, unit for me. And here I am just showing you what I will do is this is why what is the refrigeration gauge which is normally used. And here is the calibration for this 20 and 40. And of course this is psi you can see. So somewhere the pressure should be more than 40 and in between 40 and 50 it should be. So 54 to 50 we will get. And here is the adaptation what you can see this is what is the fuel line adaptation I made and here is another so this I will adapt these two I will adapt in the car in the car where I will have to do is this is not very difficult to do here is the same thing you can see this is for the car I have to remove it 
removal is easy there are two plastic pieces as i have to show you this yellow and here this color is something different gray so i have to press on these two by my finger and thumb and then remove it by force so by this way it removed it is removed you know now the fuel is the fuel is a fuel was there and fuel is dripping you can see but i will not drop too much fuel instead i have to adapt this the gauge in so here in this one i will adapt of course this one you can see so this is adapted here you can see and the other one of course i will adapt to the remaining part of the pipes which is coming from the vehicle tank fuel tank here i have to put it in so that we will be able to check the fuel pressure so here now this is in okay so now it's the time to start the car and look for the pressure okay start the car please so here is the pressure you can see and pressure is of course not 40 it is below 40 something 34 33 34 psi i'm focusing on you can see here this one is a 40 and this is 50 so it is not reaching to 40 neither 50 so this is something 33 34 psi so 33 34 psi and the engine is start you can see so this is something low pressure this is not enough to give me enough power this is what is the diagnostic for this car and further we will go for the repair and step two maybe i will show the repair and the way what i will do is i will replace the fuel pump which is located uh, underneath the rear seat so i will replace that uh, remove that and will test the will clean the filter and will uh, remove replace the uh, fuel pump so this will be in the next video keep on watching stay tuned thank you for watching